Today, I'm going to do a quick comparison of a 5 meg probe versus a 10 meg probe for weld inspection. I try to use the highest frequency probe I can when I'm doing a weld inspection. Typically, that's a 10 meg. I've gotten so used to using these that every time I have to go back to use a 5 meg or even a 2 megahertz, it's just not nearly as pretty. The higher frequency probe gives you a shorter wavelength, which means better resolution and a tighter beam spread. To visualize the appearance of a 5 meg pulse versus a 10 meg pulse, let's go to the photoelastic table. Here I've got a 5 megahertz TOF transducer on a 45 degree long wave wedge. I've adjusted the polarizers so we can see both wave types clear enough. Now with TOFT, we get both the shear and the long wave components because we're below the first critical angle. The way I like to think of it is this, longitudinal or long waves have a longer, longer wavelength and shear waves have a shorter wavelength. shorter wavelength. You can see that here. See the faster 45 degree long wave out in front has more distance between the two peaks of the same polarity. Compare that to the shear wave behind it at a lower angle. We're here to compare 5 meg and 10 megahertz probes, not deconstruct a TOF beam, so let's take a look at the 10 meg. I'll do my best to line these two up and right away you can tell the 10 megahertz is just tighter because it's a shorter wavelength. So what does all of these things have to do with us? How does it affect us when we're doing weld inspection? So I'm going to compare a 5 meg and a 10 meg on a couple of flaw specimens and we'll see. I'm going to use an Edify Gecko, a couple Vermone NDT probes, and two flaw specimens. One probe is a 5 megahertz 16 element 0.6 millimeter pitch. The other one is a 10 megahertz 32 element 0.3 millimeter pitch. That means when you do the math, they both have exactly the same active aperture of 9.6 millimeters. I've squashed both of these A10s right next to each other in a gyro scanner so we can see the differences literally side by side. I did this by machining down a couple screws to a point and I used these as the screw in buttons on the side. Then I took a Dremel and I chopped the head off one of the screws from my mini wheel set because I had a bunch of screws. Why not sacrifice one? After all of this, I have no room left for irrigation ports. That's fine. It works well enough for illustration just so long as I have a film of water on top. Now we'll get to the fun stuff and actually scan the welds. Both of the plates are basically the same. They're both 5 eighths of an inch thick carbon steel welds, V grooves, and we'll focus both the 5 and the 10 meg at a true depth of 5 eighths of an inch. As we're scanning the first plate, you can see the setup on the left hand side of the screen is the 5 megahertz and on the right hand side of the screen is the 10 megahertz. We move over to the analysis side. The first flaw that we see on this plate is slag. The 10 megahertz, pretty obvious. It's much easier to see all the little facets on that. When we move over to the second flaw, the second one is a crack and this one doesn't present exactly like you'd think a crack would present because flaws are weird. Move over to the third flaw, lack of penetration. This one's kind of obvious. And again, it's just easier to get a size on it using the 10 meg. Now we'll acquire data on the second flaw specimen. And then when we move over to the analysis on this one, the first one is actually a far side lack of fusion. And it's pretty obvious here that the 10 megahertz is just plain better at resolving all those little bits and pieces. The second one is a crack. We're going to add some soft gain here to try to resolve the tips. You can see here that even though the tip positions are the same, it's just a nicer picture to look at. Just basically a higher resolution image to look at on the 10 meg than it is on the 5 meg. And the third flaw is lack of pen, just like it was on the first plate. And again, it's just nicer on the 10 meg. Now, point out here. The probes did drift a little bit, so that lack of pen should actually be a little bit more left on the screen, but what are you going to do? So we ran through that analysis really quickly, but the end result was, but you could see it coming a mile away. The 10 megahertz probe just gives you a better image to look at. It's easier for sizing and it's easier for characterization. The cost of using higher frequency is just gain. For example, here on a one and a half inch ASME block, the five megahertz probe is at 27 decibels, whereas the 10 megahertz probe to bring the indication to the same level is at 43. Whether or not that affects you so much in the field, that's going to be up to the material you're shooting through and the thicknesses that you're dealing with. But in my day to day, I just use high frequency whenever I can get away with it. I just get better resolution and better characterization. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.